on every cell, there are receptor sites. They are triggering sites that once triggered, open the door. They allow things to cross from your bloodstream into the internal part of the cell. That's where the mitochondria are. They're in the inside of the cell. They're not hanging on the outside of the cell. You've got to get through a cell wall. There's a barrier there. And we have to cross the barrier. Well, there's all kinds of doorways. It's just like this room. If we were inside, if we were inside the cell and we were the mitochondria and we're just starving, we are so starving for a little bit of glucose so that we can do our job because we're going to convert the sugar into pure energy, we're all in this room and we're waiting. We're waiting for the sugar to enter so that we can use it. And there's this door and there's that door and there's that door and there's that door and there's that door. And there's, that door. And there's all these doorways, but there's no sugar coming because nobody opened the door. Nobody opened the doors, the doors are shut. We have to get the door open. You know what the trigger is for the receptor sites? Do you know who opens the doors? Insulin. It's like, wait a minute, I thought insulin was busy trying to turn sugar into fat. It is, but it's also responsible for triggering the receptor site. It says, I'm on hand, and it goes over to one of these doors, and it flings it open wide. Sugar's hanging out in the hallway, and in comes the sugar right through the doorway. It's like, yes, now we have the energy. Let's lift stuff. Let's go. I'm ready to, you know, I got the world by its tail, and I'm swinging it. Yes. When you have a higher triglyceride level in your bloodstream, it is a grease, and it coats the entire cell wall. So imagine if all these doors were shut, and let's, let's imagine that these doors didn't have this push, you know, the panic push bars here, but there was actually doorknobs. You know, like in your home, a lot of you are going to have doorknobs. And the insulin, one molecule, just one molecule of insulin can walk over, twist the doorknob, open the door, and say, come on in, sugar, here you go. Leave the bloodstream and go into the mitochondria. But what if there was grease? on the cell wall? What if there was grease on the doorknob? How easy is it going to be for you to turn the doorknob and get the door open? You will eventually be able to do it, but instead of it taking you it's just a little bit of effort, just twist the knob, throw open the door, you have to, you know, okay, I'm, all right, just a minute, just a minute. So now it doesn't take one molecule of insulin, it takes 10 molecules, or 15, or 50, or 100 molecules to do the same job that one molecule could do before. In other words, you need more insulin to be able to wrench that slippery doorknob and get that door wrenched open. Oh my goodness, so it means we need more insulin. Okay, so let's carry this a little bit further. What if your triglycerides were really high? Like, I talked with some people, they're 250, they're 300. You have a very high, this high triglycerides. That grease can get so thick on the cell wall that the receptor sites disappear. You can't even see them anymore. There's nothing to grab. There's nothing for even 100 molecules to, of insulin to grab and try to wrench open the door. The more grease that you lob onto those receptor sites or those doorknobs, it comes to a point where they're just covered up and they're not even available anymore. You don't even see them. And so what happens with the sugar? It's still in the bloodstream. So your blood sugar's high and your insulin says, I can't get any doors open. Okay, let's convert all these things into tri triglycerides. But do you see the more triglycerides you have than the more grease you have on the doorknobs? So this is this vicious circle. And so what we have, we've done is, and we've tried all kinds of things, and, and to try to correct this, we take, we take oral hypoglycemics. Oral hypoglycemics are drugs. They're like, there's, there's glipizide, and there's a bunch of these, okay? It means we, that pancreas needs to make more insulin because we have all the sugar in the bloodstream. That pancreas needs to make more insulin. And so we force it, we squeeze it. Now these are some, you know, I'm using an analogy. We squeeze the pancreas, we take a whip and we beat it and say, come on, come on, we need more, we need more insulin because the sugars are high. Give me more insulin and it'll work because 
We have more insulin, so we have 100 molecules march in. Here we go. Stand back. We will open this door. We have a whole group of us here. And they wrench the door open, and our blood sugars go into the mitochondria, and whoosh, our blood sugars come down. What are we doing to the pancreas, though? What are we doing to the pancreas, though? Or we take insulin by injection. And I'm not saying, don't, don't anybody like I said, I'm repeating, just keep taking your meds. You've got to go about this the right way to get off of it. And so we take insulin by injection, and we injection, and there's lots of injection sites, but most people do it in their belly or in their thigh or whatever. And we take insulin. And then that insulin runs around, and you have to be, are you as smart as your hypothalamus, your brain, to know exactly how much? We are guessing. You know, we've got, we've got some really great physicians that are telling you, okay, if you eat this many carbohydrates and then, you know, your blood glucose is here, here's your baseline, and we're going to take this many. And we try, but every diabetic sitting out there knows it's nigh well impossible, you know, because it's like, I am doing everything right with my diet, I'm doing everything, but there's so many other factors that are coming in here, which I want to go over the other factors. I mean, there's exercise, there's stress, there's medications, there's heat, there's cold, all these things are impacting it. Do you know who's able to handle all the variables that, and, that take care of this knowing how much insulin needs to be injected or needs to be released from your pancreas, there's only one. It's called your brain. Your brain, because your brain knows exactly your body temperature at this moment in time. Your brain knows exactly the stress that you're under and how much adrenaline you just released because adrenaline has everything to do with blood sugars too. Your body knows what perfume you just inhaled. Your body knows if you just walked across the room or if you've been lying in bed. All those things affect your need or your not need for insulin. And so as we, and we're trying our best to determine, okay, well, if it was this much, you know, on your blood sugar reading, when you, you know, pricked your finger and you took your glucose number, then this is how much insulin, but it's never perfect. It's never perfect. We always have trouble getting it down. And that's because we have so many variables impacting. So when we take insulin by injection, then if we got too much, guess what we just made more of? triglycerides. You have more triglycerides. And if you have more triglycerides, then you have more insulin resistance. This is what's called when they're the, the grease, the triglycerides, which is a grease. It's a fat. It's a grease. And when it's coating the cell wall, it's called insulin resistance. So the more insulin we take, the more triglycerides we get and the more resistant we are. Therefore, we have to take more insulin. 